in circa 1984, the International, the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers at Pikes Peak, Colorado Springs chapter, was going to have a conference on Tesla in celebration of IEEE's birthday. At the same time, there was about three other groups that were planning to have a Tesla conference. A person in, named Leland Anderson, who has written many uh, books about Tesla, uh, contacted all the groups and said, hey, let's get together and have one big conference in Colorado Springs. The first uh, international conference, Tesla conference was held, Tesla Symposium, was held in Colorado Springs, July of 1984. And that's in celebration of his lab in Colorado Springs, right? Right. And actually his whole life. And during the process, uh, a New York Times reporter was there, and a week later, uh, an article appeared in the New York Times. Now, this was just a temporary committee just set up to have one conference, and that was what, all it was supposed to have done. However, within week, a week, we got a ton of mail now, people interested in Tesla. And then the decision had to be made, like, were we going to remain uh, just a committee or were we going to organize a permanent organization? Mm, okay. And, we organi and uh, a decision was made to organize uh, a permanent organization. And we wrote a constitution, bylaws, got incorporated in the state of Colorado, uh, applied for a 501c nonprofit, and I uh, started having a newsletter, and I was the first editor of the newsletter. And I was still going to college at the time, just finishing up. And uh, that's how the Tesla Society itself was born. Uh, we, we had an initial board of about six or seven members. And we, we started uh, having a, a monthly board meetings and started growing from there. Mm, okay, okay. So now, did Tesla Tech come directly out of this, or? No. The Tesla Society uh, struggled for many years. Uh, a good part of the time it was in my basement. Um, a lot of board members, I don't know, for whatever reasons, they, they come and go. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, probably the only person who attended every board meeting up to the time I left in 1996. Okay. At one time, I was the president, uh, and um, no, this is this is International Tesla Society. The International right? Tesla Society, and it was a nonprofit. Okay. Okay. Now, during this time, I worked for Unisys, and I also had my own little book company called High Energy Enterprises. And uh, in 1990, 91, the Tesla Society was informed that they were going to get an endowment. At that time, I owned the Tesla Museum. I had a book company called High Energy Enterprises, and um, the society uh, looked at it and they decided that maybe what they ought to do is take and purchase my company and use that as a business structure for their nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did. Uh, they went through uh, some battles there, you know, with uh, some eclectic individuals. And uh, but we were able to firmly establish the Tesla Society. At its high point, we uh, had about 4,000 active members. Uh, our conferences were running about 600 to 750. And I was the editor of the magazine, and I put together most of the proceedings. And yeah, yeah. And organized the conferences. Well, now the Tesla Tech Conference, this conference itself, this, this, and, and it's a little bit, it's diversified a little bit, right? It, it, it's not like quite as, I mean, it's Tesla focused, but not quite so much as the, the older ones. For this kind of, what Tesla Tech is, is after I left uh, the society, uh, I started my own organization called Exotic Research, and it was uh, more along the lines of global science, uh, plus a lot of the good features of the Tesla Society. And, uh, however, we were kind of struggling at the time. There was like the Global Science Conference, the Tesla Conference, um, there was my conference, the Exotic Research Conference, uh, the Psychotronics, um, there was Preparedness Expos every two months, you know, in cities across the U.S. Uh, there's a lot of competition at the time. 
just prior to the turn of the century. At the turn of the century, all of a sudden, uh, it's like we moved behind the clouds spiritually. The whole nation, the whole world did. Sure, sure. And now, do you think that's kind of hurt attendance in the recent years, or? And what happened is, is like um, Dean Stoner passed away, and Global Sciences ended. The Tesla Society uh, could not replace me, and uh, they ended up closing their doors. Uh, they, after Y2K, the Preparedness Expos, they all ceased to exist, and uh, there was nothing. So that was Even, it, huh? All the Tesla Societies were just e blown to the wind. Including exotic research, we went through a terrible time after 9-1-1 to the point where I lost literally everything except the shirt on my back and a quarter in my pocket and uh, we moved forward from there. Uh, we moved to Queen Valley then uh, I worked a year doing odd jobs just just surviving until I could find a partner who could uh, was willing to take a chance and uh, start at least get started up again. Yeah, when you guys are you guys are doing really well with Tesla Tech. It's, it's growing and it's Engaging new people and like the Tesla Society when it existed in Colorado Springs, it served as a magnet, and you know and people were just attracted to Colorado Springs. You know to be part of the Tesla Society or be involved with it, you know, and, and and it just kept growing and growing and growing. Now the same thing is starting to happen in Queen Valley. You know we get phone calls all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, and it's just growing. The people are, are motivated. Uh, now we're starting to get younger people involved, you know. Uh, I can see nothing but growth ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah a positive growth.